in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who made the mother of your Son to be our mother and our Queen, graciously grant that, sustained by her intercession, we may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. On those who live in the land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time, as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood is burned and consumed by fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders. And this is the name they give him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Why does his dominion in a peace that has no end, for the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Word of the Lord May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. Praise, O servants of the Lord! Praise the name of the Lord! May the name of the Lord be blessed both now and forevermore. May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praised be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens His glory. May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. Who is like the Lord our God, who has risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to look down, to look down upon heaven and earth. May the name of the Lord be blessed for evermore. From the dust he lifts up the lowly, from the dung heap he raises the poor, to set him in the company of princes, yes, with the princes of his people. May the name of the Lord be blessed for evermore. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. And the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Listen. You are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. 
Know this too. Your kinswoman Elizabeth has, in her old age, herself conceived a son, and she whom people call barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. So who are we talking about here, this Jesus? And what is the image that we have of Jesus here? We hear of the words throne. We have the words rule, reign. And so we have the image of the king. And we know that we celebrate Christ the king um, on the last Sunday of the liturgical year. And so we have this woman called Mary, who is to conceive and bear a son. And so if the son Jesus is king, then who is Mary? And we have to go back to the Jewish scriptures that really automatically we think that, oh, if someone is king, then very likely the wife would be the queen. But not for the Jewish people. Who is the queen for the Jewish people? It is actually the queen mother of the king. And there is a special term in the Hebrew, which is Kebira, which means the great lady. And that's where we have our lady. And let me read to you from uh, the first book of the Kings, chapter 2, verse 19 onwards. And we can already hear... um, what this kingship and queenship is all about. And as I read it, I will just say a few words about some of the words. So Bathsheba, um, the one that King David had an adulterous affair with, uh, gave birth to King Solomon. And so King Solomon is her son. And when King Solomon became the king, guess who became the queen mother? Bathsheba. And so in verse 19 of 1 Kings chapter 2, we hear, So Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him about Adonijah who actually asked Bathsheba to um, intercede for him to King Solomon. The king, Solomon, rose to meet her and bowed before her. What happened here? It is to fulfill the fourth commandment, to honour your father and mother. So he bowed before uh, the queen mother uh, to give her honour. He then sat down on his throne, King Solomon. A seat was brought for the mother of the king, and she sat down at his right hand. In the English translation here in the Jerusalem Bible, and also in the RSV, we hear the word seat. But actually in the Hebrew, the word throne for King Solomon and the word seat for the mother is actually the same word in Hebrew, which is kise, which is throne. So actually there's a throne brought for the mother as well, meaning that she's also queen. And Bathsheba said, I have one small request to make you. Do not refuse me. My mother, the king answered, make your request, for I will not refuse you. So this is Queen Mother Bathsheba making a request to King Solomon on behalf of Adonijah. And we know about the Old Testament and the New Testament that we always talk about typology, where there is a prefiguration of uh, what's happening in the Old Testament that is being fulfilled in the New. And King Solomon is the son of King David. And so we have here also in our Gospel for today that we have the Lord God will give him, Jesus, the throne of his ancestor David, which King Solomon also set. And so we have here... King Solomon, with his queen mother on his right side, um, making requests. And so now we have Jesus. Who is the queen mother? 
we know that is Mary. And that is the feast of today. Queen and mother. That's who Mary is. And so we honour her as Jesus' queen and mother. And that is why Christians of all ages have always entrusted their prayers to our Blessed Mother, her intercession. And that's why we honour her with what we call hyperdulia. Um, I know today I'm getting a bit technical, but I think for those of you who might appreciate it, so they can answer a few questions to some of our other Christian and brothers and sisters who have been wondering, hey, you worship Mary, right? How come? Uh? And really, um, in the Greek, it is very, very clear that to God, we um, latria God, that means worship God, adore God, that's a technical word in English. We dulia the saints, we honour the saints. Uh, the Greek word is dulia. But because Mary is Queen of Heaven, which is also what we celebrate today, uh, and the Queen of Angels, Queen of all saints, so therefore we honour her in a very special way. We hyper dulia her, which means that this honour is a, a greater honour than that of the saints. But it's not latria, it's not the level of worship of God. So who is God to us is very clear. We worship Him and worship Him alone. We consecrate our entire lives to God alone, just like Mary also consecrated her life to God. And that's why we can follow after the example of Mary, who is the first and best disciple. But because of her special role, her singular role as mother of Jesus, who is king, she's also queen and mother, and she's been given as a mother to all of us. Um, look at her at the foot of the cross where Jesus, using his dying breath as he was struggling on the cross, said, Behold your mother, and woman, behold your son. And so we have been given to Mary as children, and therefore she is our mother. She cares for us, the church. And also at the wedding of Cana, um, at her intercession, Jesus worked his first sign in the Gospel of John. And so with the example of Jesus with what Jesus has done um, and has said, we have the confidence to embrace Mary as our mother and queen. So at the celebration today, let us continue to follow the example of Mary, but also to entrust our prayers uh, to her, believing that at the right side of her son, she would take our prayers uh, to her son, our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, and that our prayers really might be conformed to the will of God, that we may grow in love and in desire of God, just like she did. And with confidence, let us now pray in the words our Saviour Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this heavenly sacrament, we humbly pray, O Lord, that we who reverently celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary may merit to be partakers at your eternal banquet. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.